Welcome to At Home with Music. In this special edition, I have the pleasure of talking with an old friend of mine. His name is Charlie Miller. And Charlie and I met way back in the late 70s when we were both in college. He was 19, I was 20. And we had many of the same teachers because we were both music majors. And so we have both had careers that have been music-based. I went on to be a performer and a teacher, composer, songwriter, and so on. And Charlie also ended up as a performer, and now he is a teacher at a private school in uh, Rolling Hills in uh, Southern California. He'll tell us a little bit more about that. And he's also developed a career as a piano tuner and technician. Now, I know that many of you have keyboards, like the one that I'm sitting behind here, but also some of you have regular acoustic pianos in your home. And perhaps you have questions about how best to take care of that precious instrument. Well, Charlie is here to help you. He has extensive knowledge of how to care for your acoustic piano. And so I've invited him on here today to tell us about tuning pianos and all kinds of different questions that might come up concerning caring for an acoustic piano. So without further ado, I know that sounds like a cliche, doesn't it? Without further ado, my good friend, Charlie Miller. Oh, I, I should mention that Charlie lives in California, in Long Beach, I believe. And I, of course, am here in Nashville. So we, uh, not Nashville, Asheville. So we don't get to see each other that often. So it, it was really great to see him on this Zoom call that I recorded. So let me introduce you to my good friend, Charlie Miller. So you've been tuning pianos in San Pedro, my hometown today, huh? Yeah, I was tuning, uh, I tuned a couple of pianos in San Pedro today. One was a bald one from the 60s, and that one was in pretty decent condition. And one was a brand I'd never heard of from the 1800s. So that wow. one took some time, but they came out okay. That's great. Yeah. Well, tell me, how did you get started tuning pianos? I have always been interested in tuning pianos from when I was a kid and used to play piano at, at my dad's church. He was a pastor over in Long Beach, California. And so that piano would get out of tune as pianos do and we'd have to wait till he got around to it and, and call someone to tune it. And I remember thinking it can't be that hard to tune pianos. I should learn how to do this. And then I just chucked that away in the back burner. And I think finally, when I was in my early 30s, I found a school in Los Angeles where I could go one day a week and, and they would teach tuning. And I went into that school thinking, how hard can this be? You know, a few months and I'll be fine. And it turned out it was a pretty complicated process. And I spent two years there, one day a week, and, and came out of there knowing quite a bit about pianos, but still not being that good of a tuner. And then I gradually got better. And uh, then I set all that aside for quite a long time. And now fast forward to about four years ago, I, I regained interest in it again. And I've been, I've been relearning a lot of things from one mentor who's just teaching me about the old school aural methods of tuning and, and a few other mentors who are just teaching me about, you know, repair and adjustments and everything's going very well. And I'm you know pretty busy with the work right now. So you're really a piano tuner and then also a piano technician? Would you yes. characterize yourself that way? Yes, I would. Yeah. So are there are there guys that just tune and they don't really fix the pianos or or just about everybody does both? Uh, there are, but in this field, it's encouraged to be able to do as many things on a piano as you can. Now, there are some tasks related to piano repair that I just don't want to do, and I would always refer those things out. And there are some people who only want to do the major rebuilding, but they really don't want to go out and tune it when they're done. Oh. Uh, but somewhere in the middle of all that, there are a lot of piano tuner technicians who can do most of the work. And we're always learning from each other, but that's my general direction. Let's talk a little bit more about the care and feeding of Acoustic pianos. Uh, many of my viewers, I imagine, have have spinets. Probably not too many people have grand pianos anymore. 
they used to be the uh, the thing to have in the upper class households of the 1800s and 1900s, but not anymore. But I right. imagine some of some of my, I'm, I mean, you've been out tuning pianos, so there's obviously pianos out there, and I'm sure a lot of my viewers have acoustic pianos. So, what's the first thing that you would tell somebody when they say, "Hey, Charlie, I've got an acoustic piano, but I'm not sure what to do to take care of it." Most important thing you can do is keep that piano in tune. Yeah, I would think in terms of once or twice a year, have it tuned. Mm -hmm. and, and if the piano sounds reasonable to you and a year has gone by since you've tuned it, have it tuned anyway. Amen, brother. If you, yeah. If you don't have your piano tuned regularly, it will begin to gradually fall flatter and flatter until it will get to the point that it's very difficult to bring it back into proper pitch. And sometimes in those situations, that piano may need three or four tunings over a period of several months at much more cost to you just to get that piano to be stable. So most important thing, keep the piano in tune, even if no one is playing it regularly, just take care of it. How does the uh, atmosphere in the house, like say the house is very humid or dry, how does that affect the tuning of a piano? Does it go out of tune more quickly? Say if there's, um, humidity and then they run the AC and the, the air goes from being humid to very dry. I would say that that is the, the greatest factor in putting a piano out of tune. Some people think that the piano goes out of tune because it's being played and playing the piano, especially playing the piano hard does have an effect on the tuning. But in this room, for example, in this school room, this room is not heated at night. There can be a 20 or 30 degree fluctuation between daytime temperature and nighttime temperature up here. Uh, and there is a heater in this fairly small room or an air conditioner. So this piano goes through a lot of change. And I have to tune this piano probably once every three months just to keep it you know, sounding decent. If your piano gets very dry, that will cause a shrinkage of certain wood parts and if it and if it gets more damp it'll cause those parts to swell especially soundboard things like that it's not that you can see it happening but on a, on a very small microscopic level all those changes with swelling and shrinkage of the wood parts are affecting that piano's stability pianos mm -hmm. are really always moving they're they're almost living things once you tune a piano, it's going out of tune within minutes again. It may not sound out of tune for several months, but they're always changing. And do you tune um, strictly pianos in people's homes or do you tune like pianos that are used for concerts and recitals? I'm not a concert tuner yet. I hope that at some point I can do that. That's a little bit different skill set. I tune mostly homes and schools and churches and sort of smaller venues like that. What's the, what's the, uh, what needs to happen to be a concert tuner? Are they like in a special class? Um, they are hearing uh, nuances in that sound that is beyond my capability. Uh, they can talk to the, to the pianist prior to the concert and understand what that pianist wants in terms of how that piano will feel they can make certain differences in different parts of the piano to suit that performer. Um, that's a special skill set. <laughs> so I am not, I'm not there. Uh, and I know, I know people who only do concert tunings. They don't want to mess around with home tunings or school tunings. They just do concert venues. And then I know people that really never do concert venues and don't have any interest in that at all. Frequently, concert technicians will tune several hours prior to the performance, and then that person will stay there for the performance and sometimes come out during intermission and touch it up again. Wow. One of the things that you mentioned to me was the difference between a pitch raise and a tuning. What's the difference between those two things? I did both of those things today on one piano. Uh, if the piano is too far below pitch, and by too far below pitch, we're talking maybe five or six cents below. So mm -hmm. for those who might not know, uh, a step on a piano, say from F to G, that 
is divided up into 100 increments, that's 100 cents. And so there are 50 cents in a normal half step. Uh, 25 cents flat would be one quarter step flat. So really just about five cents flat is too much for the piano to take all of that in just one pass through. Uh -huh. So what I would do in that situation is just take measurements on my, on my special piano machine and then um, bring that, you know, bring up each string a little bit higher than we ultimately want it to be. So I'm going to make the piano sharp by a measured amount, go through the whole thing from lowest to highest, try and do it fairly quickly in about 15, 20 minutes or so. And then when that's done, by the time I go back to the low end to begin the real tuning, most of those strings will have hopefully settled down into the ballpark of the pitch that we want. And then I can do the fine tuning. Sometimes if the piano is very far off, it might take more than one pass through on the, on the pitch raise phase before mm -hmm. the ultimate tuning can be done. I should also mention that during that uh, uh, first pitch raise phase, I'm not too concerned about precise unisons. I just want to get it up there in the ballpark and then move on. And the, the bridge of the piano is fluctuating during that time. A lot of changes are happening in that mechanism. So it's better to just do it fast. Then finally, once that pitch raise or two has been done, then I just start all over again and tune the piano as normal. At that point, the piano is more likely to be stable and hold its tuning. And it still may only hold it for maybe three months or so. But then after that, if it's tuned again, it should maintain its tuning much longer. Another reason to tune that piano. <laughs> Keep that piano tuned on a regular basis. Don't let it go too flat. I used to have mine tuned three times a year. Uh, yeah. When I had it, sometimes four. I couldn't stand it if it was going slightly off. Why? Um, I did have that one key that was sticking. Why, why do piano keys sometimes stick like that? What's happening to huh. them? Well, there can be a few things. You have a grand piano, right? I have an action model here. Oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, let me find a flat place for this. You can tell I came prepared with the equipment, but nowhere to put it. So let's move this down. Try not to break anything. I have to pay for it. Okay. Now, is this in full view? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Whoops. There you go. Yeah. Now it's in full view. There you go. Okay. So from here, this is your key. This is what we're perceiving as sticking. And by sticking, I assume you're meaning that you're playing it and it's not returning, or it's right. not returning as quickly as it should. Yeah. Um, there are several reasons why that could happen. And that's, I'm all cut off here. There are several <laughs> reasons why that could happen. Frequently, uh, when a customer calls me, you know, for the first time, we'll talk for a bit. I'll ask them about the piano. They'll say, well, it just needs tuning. Oh, I have this one key that's sticking. So a little bell goes off in my head. And I ask, is it sticking all the time? Is it sticking when you have the pedal down? Different things. And they may know, they may not know. And there's not much we can do in the phone, but I go to the piano with that in mind. When I get to the piano, I'm gonna start checking that key from the front to the back. Everything farther back than where my hand is, that's not visible when the piano is closed up. So there's a lot of crazy stuff that's happening that we can't see. If we are lucky, the piano may be sticking because the the bushing, if you can see that, that red. Yeah. That bushing may be swollen up from humidity. And sometimes we can just take a tool and ease that down. We can compress it back down and it will move about freely in the cabin. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to take it out the window out anyway. There we go. <laughs> if that bushing has been freed up, it will move about more freely up and down on this pin. 
That's what I hope is wrong. There's another opportunity for that right here on what's called the balance rail. So the, so the key sits there, goes up and down, it's balancing. There's another bushing there. If uh -huh. this one is okay, then I'm gonna check this one. I'm just gonna work from the front to back. If both of those are okay, meaning that they're falling freely, then the problem is back here in the action. And then we have to start pulling things apart. There are several places where there are moving parts and they're all swinging on little tiny pins that are wrapped in little thin pieces of belt. And just as there can be swelling here, there can be swelling back there. So uh, I wanna make sure that this is moving freely. I wanna make sure that these pieces are moving freely, that this is, so there's about five or six places that have to swing freely with a little bit of friction, but not so much friction that they're sticking. If I, once I find that culprit, that spot where it's not moving as it should, then I can possibly lubricate in that spot or if it looks as so though that won't work, I have to take that flange apart, replace it with a slightly smaller pin, do that surgery, put it back together. And then hopefully when that's done, the key moves as it should. So that's a long answer as to why keys stick. <laughs> there could be a dozen reasons for it. That's uh, that's gonna be a, a revelation to a lot of folks. I don't think a lot of people realize how complex the mechanism of a piano actually is. It really is. There's approximately 10,000 parts in this piano. Now, some of that is because all of this is repeated 88 times. But yeah, I, you know, I, I used to hear there's 10,000 parts. I thought, no, that can't be true. And then in my mind, I would start adding up all the different systems and pretty quickly it gets up into the thousands. Yeah. This is a grand piano action model. The upright piano is of course a bit different. So rather than the key bouncing up to hammers, in this situation, it still is the same from the front, but then it's pushing a different set of levers and so forth to make the hammer go forward into the strings. Yeah. This is probably more like maybe what, what a lot of your viewers might have at home. Right. Um, if they have what are called spinet actions, those are a bit more complicated because much of the mechanism is down below the level of the keyboard. It's called a drop action. Uh -huh. So your key goes forward as normal. The spinet key is a little bit shorter, which explains why they feel a little bit harder to play because there's not as much leverage. They are pulling up on some parts that are going down below, another curve there, another curve there and back up. And then it begins to affect all of this. Then it's very similar from this point on. Yes. Well, I'm glad you were able to show us both the upright and the grand, because like you say, most of my viewers are probably going to have upright pianos or spinets, you know, smaller mm -hmm. pianos. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite type of piano, like Baldwin, Yamaha, or to tune, or are some uh, pianos easier to tune than That's others? a great question, because I, I think about it as you do as a performer. I've played the piano for, you know, since dinosaurs ruled the earth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I remember those days and we were learning around the same time. Uh, as, a, as a performer uh, and as a piano technician, I like a lot of the same pianos. So I, I always like Steinways. Uh, I like Yamaha pianos quite a lot. And I like Kawai pianos quite a lot. Yamaha pianos and Kawai pianos are very different from each other in, in how they are engineered. Kawais tend to have a little bit, a uh, little bit rounder edge to the tone. Yamahas are quite a bit more bright and cutting, and so it really just depends on what the artist is looking for. And uh, uh, Steinways are a little bit different, but probably closer to Yamahas than they are to Kawais. Mm -hmm. So, as far as my favorite, if I were to just look at those three. I would say currently I'm kind of a Yamaha fan, but I go back and forth. <laughs> so, Do you feel Leon, that uh, that more of your viewers are using electronic keyboards or using regular pianos these days? I suspect the majority of them are using keyboards. And what I try to wean them away from are keyboards that do not have weighted keys. 
Sure. Some yeah. of them have the old Casios and so on. I mean, if it's a, I have some viewers who are like in their 70s and 80s and they've got a, a Casio keyboard. I'm not going to tell them, hey, you need to go out and get a piano. No. Uh, they, no. Let them, because they just want to play chords and play their favorite songs. And, and they'll Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I but, think there's always there's always going to be a better keyboard. There's always going to be a better piano. But the best keyboard or the best piano is the one that you're able to use and the one that you're going to grow with. Speaking of pianos, though, you you had mentioned about the 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 hazards or the uh, fall, uh, the uh, pitfalls of free pianos. Like this was my grandma's piano and she wanted us to. Yeah. Have yeah, man. What are some I, of the risks involved there? <laughs> I, I saw some piano technicians wearing t-shirts at the last convention I attended and it said friends don't let friends get free pianos <laughs> uh, there's there's no such thing as a as a free piano uh, at the very least you will probably have to have the piano moved to your home so that's a few hundred dollars there uh, if the piano is being given away, that means it probably hasn't been used for quite a long time, which usually means it hasn't been tuned for quite a long time. So you're probably looking at, you know, more than $200 in your pitch race and your tuning. Um, there's probably problems going on with the action, again, just because it hasn't been used for a while. So that free piano could right away cost you $500 to get it sounding good and you know playing well uh, now if you can get it sounding good and you know playing well for that price that's really great and you probably wouldn't get anything close to a a new or a newish piano for that price but just be very careful when someone offers you a new piano and be polite and you can be interested but it would be a very wise thing to call an actual piano technician to maybe go to where that piano is and look it over with you and give you an opinion as to whether that's a good piano to take or not. Have you ever been called upon to perform that function to kind of? Just recently, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, I would say right before Christmas, I did something like that. And so they, they did end up taking that piano. Uh, the piano can use thousands of dollars worth of work and if that thousands of dollars worth of work is done, that piano will be worth a good solid $200. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, uh, there was a relative who would offer to pay for a certain amount of work to be done. They were happy to bring that piano home. They don't have an emotional connection with the piano. It was just a, they thought a good opportunity. And I was able to get the piano raised to the proper pitch and tuned and sounding really pretty good it's going to still need you know regular adjustments with the action and every time i go tune it i'll just do a little bit more to free up the action i don't think this family is going to keep it more than five years so they thought it was worth bringing it home so you know we'll see yeah <laughs> Now, in addition to tuning pianos, you teach piano privately and you also teach in school, right? Right. I, I teach general music here at this school where I'm sitting now in Rolling Hills Estates, California. And I do teach some private piano. I'm teaching less and less private pianos. I'm trying to make room in my schedule to tune pianos. And so I'm teaching less and tuning more. But I, I do like teaching music at this school and plan to stay here for at least a few more years. And, and then we'll see what happens at that point. And what's the age range of your students? Kindergarten through eighth grade. So that's about five to about 13 or so, I think. So how long have you been teaching at the school? Oh my goodness, Leon. I, I've been here 18 years now. Wow. And that seems like a long time. I remember coming here and, and accepting this position and thinking I'll do this for a year or two until I figure out what's next. And, you know, turns out this is what's next. And <laughs> I've been doing very well here. Yeah. I know I've seen your classroom and it, it's, it's a neat place. It really it is, is a good place. Yeah. 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 Right now you are seeing a, a relatively clean, uh, carefully curated section. If you looked around the room, it looks like a disaster right now, but that's okay. 
<laughs> well, I've seen some pictures on Facebook of your classroom. It's yeah, it looks nice and homey and a good place for the kids to learn. That's got to be very rewarding. I mean, you have the advantage over me in that I don't see most of my students. Uh, you know, and and I get a lot of comments and uh, I get to answer a lot of questions, but it's all done online. I really love what you do with your videos, though, because you have a very calm, kind of warm presence, you know, as you explain some pretty complex facets of music theory and music history. So I watch most of them and I'm, you know, and, and without being, you know, sarcastic, I, I think this is the Mr. Rogers of, of music teaching videos. <laughs> it's, a, it's a calm place that I look forward to visiting every week. Well, I got to show you what I've been drinking out of here. Let's see if you can see that. Oh no! <laughs> for those of you who don't know what I'm what I'm holding here, this this mug was made for me by Charlie. Gosh, how many years ago now? 50, 40 some years ago, uh, we graduated. I graduated in nineteen eighty, and uh, this was. I'll have to tell the story behind this in another video. Of course, yes. It's. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe we can get together another time and talk about our favorite teachers that we had when we were in college because man i know i i've got some stories i could tell yeah, about yeah. My time in, in uh you know it's hard to believe that when we met we were both teenagers we were i was uh i think 19 years old when i transferred to cal state dominguez hills uh and you were maybe a year older or so i don't know yeah, I think uh, yeah. Year, I was a year older. I was a year ahead of you, so I, I guess I was twenty. So nonetheless, we were still pretty young. Yeah. You know, we're going back forty-five years, but it's so mm -hmm. great to see you again, and I really appreciate you, you coming on and talking about what you do because it's fascinating to me. It's something that I have never had a, a chance to learn. You know, when when uh, I go to church, they they never tune the pianos in a proper fashion the church where i play now they have a, a yamaha grand which is a pretty nice piano but when we first started we're, we're actually meeting in a seventh day adventist church mm. it's a church plant and uh, the, the piano was not tuned properly and, and i i said okay we got to tell these people tune this piano take care of this thing and they tuned it <laughs> that's so, an admirable thing for the church it's just not in the budgets for a lot of churches to tune their pianos and church pianos need to be tuned several times a year. They also have these systems called damp chasers, which uh, I'm trying to learn a little bit more about. Uh, they're not very difficult to install. I just haven't taken time to really look into them. So it's a little system where uh, you plug this into the wall and it will maintain temperature of the soundboard. And it will also maintain the right you know, uh, humidity level uh, for the piano. So you have wow. to keep it filled with water. Don't let it get too full. Don't let it get too empty. But once it's set up properly, it's, it's a fairly low maintenance thing. And pianos in churches or schools or any sort of institutional setting quite often benefit from having that kind of system attached to them. I really appreciate the opportunity to share and to see you and to be part of what you're doing. Again, as I said, not just for your viewers, but for you. I really enjoy watching what you come up with every week. Uh, and uh, it's 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 obviously gotten smoother and more effortless as the weeks go on. Well, any final words for folks who own acoustic pianos as we close out here? I would say, as I said, probably two or three times in this video, just keep that piano in tune the best you can. Having a piano is a financial commitment. It's a space commitment. It's not a clarinet in a case. It's a piece of furniture that takes up a lot of time. It's it, it's going to fill your home. Uh, but do the very best you can to keep that piano in tune. Use a piano technician who is a member of the Piano Technicians Guild. Those wow. people take the craft very seriously. I'm happy to be part of that group. Um, and have someone come visit your piano at least once a year and bring it up in tune and, and you will be able to give that to your grandchildren. So just take care of the piano. All right. Well, I'm sure that my viewers will appreciate those words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have reached our time limit. So All right. Well, we got 
good to talk to you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, we'll have to do this again sometime when we're not talking about music. Well, actually, I'd like to get together again and talk about the teachers that we had in college. I think people oh, would yeah, enjoy, yeah. enjoy hearing about te different teaching styles and personalities and so on. I know we've had a lot of the same teachers and some stories we could tell there. We have, we have. Well, you know, I learned a lot from all of them, but they all had different ways. They certainly did. <laughs> all right, Charlie. It's great to All talk. All right, Leon, good to see you, my friend. We will talk soon. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.